What's going on, you guys? It is your boy, the American F1 fan, Eric Ringle here, and we are just a week after the Miami Grand Prix, and it was quite a successful event uh, here in the United States, um, not just in the state of uh, Florida, but also on TV, as the uh, ratings came out for the Miami Grand Prix, and they had 2.56 million viewers which was a new record uh, for Formula One uh, viewing in the United States. And this is, this is, I think, a great sign. But I feel like there are some other things that I'm, not only Formula One can do, but the FIA and Liberty Media, there are certain other things that they can do to, I think, even attract more and more F1 fans in from America, and I'm going to talk about, there were three points that I kind of came up in particular that I kind of wanted to talk about. So let's get on to my, into my three points and let's just discuss them a little bit. Okay, so like I said, I have three points that I wanted to talk about. So my first point is, so if you've watched the coverage on ESPN, you do know that we, uh, that we get the broadcast feed from Sky Sports over in England. And all well and good, I love David Crofty, I love Martin Brundle, I think they're both fantastic um, Formula One uh, commentators, they, they really know their stuff, but sometimes the stuff that they're talking about within Formula One, the casual U.S. viewer won't necessarily understand, and they don't break things down um, you know, for, for the common fan who's, you know, maybe just picking it up for the first time or maybe pick it up off of Drive to Survive, they, you know, they want to be able to learn some certain things, um, you know, as they're watching a race weekend. So my first point is, is that I think the United States needs to have their own broadcasting team. So whoever carries the coverage, obviously ESPN has the contract right now, um, but I feel like that ESPN needs to bring in their own Formula One team based of, you know, all United States, uh, you know, commentators, racers, former racers, and have them be able to call the race. Because you're going to, if you're going to want to bring in fans, you're going to have to, and I, I hate using this word because it's not, it's not truly what I mean by it, but they kind of have to bring down or dumb down, you know, some of the explanations of Formula One, some of the things, you know, the intricacies of Formula One, and they need to kind of be able to get that out to the viewer and have them understand what exactly they're talking about and be able to actually understand exactly what they're, ta what they're talking about. I'll tell you the person that I loved the most when I was growing up as a Formula One fan, as far as U.S. commentators... Bob Varsha. Bob Varsha was an absolute legend in the United States as far as auto racing uh, commentators go, period. Bob Varsha was the guy that I think a lot of commentators looked up to and tried to aspire to. And in the United States would be much obliged to find someone of Bob Varsha's talent. Obviously, with Bob Varsha no longer around, you can't have him. But, you know, if you were able to find somebody that would be able to, you know, explain the sport and be able to explain the intricacies so that even, you know, the person that just picked up Formula One after, you know, watching one of my videos or, you know, whatever the case may be, they'll be able to pick it up relatively quickly. I'll tell you, NBC Sports did a really good job with this back in, uh, back when they had the contract for Formula One, they had their own U.S. Uh, broadcasting team. So I feel like if uh, ESPN or whoever picks up the next contract were to bring in their own crew, um, you know, you've, you've got several several people that you could bring in. You've got J your Jeff Gordons, you've got your Tony Stewarts, who both started in open wheel racing. As much as she's a polarizing figure in auto racing, you've got Danica Patrick. You've got a lot of other uh, talent out there in the United States that can really contribute to Formula One and, you know, be able to explain the intricacies of the sport so that us as American fans will be able to better understand the sport and, you know, be able to understand what they're talking about and doesn't, 
won't feel like that everything's going over their head. So my second point that I brought, that I kind of thought of, and this kind of goes along the lines of having, you know, the your you own U.S. broadcasters, is more coverage of Formula One just in general in the United States. Um, most sports shows, like your sports centers, your first takes, you know, your opinion shows, none of that covers Formula One all that all, all that frequently. Sports Center did a little bit um, this past week with Miami, but they didn't have, they just didn't really do enough. And so I feel like that if ESPN, Formula One, Liberty Media, whoever it wants to be, were to have like a half an hour or an hour long show where you talk about the prior race, you know, you talk about news floating around, you've got your, you know, Formula One insider that may be talking about rumors. And then you have an interview segment with one of your drivers or one of your uh, team principals, like your Toto Wolfs, your Christian Horners, your Otmar Snafsauer, you know, Lawrence Stroll, whoever, you know, whoever you could, you know, find on the team principal side. Or you could get drivers like Charles Leclerc, Max Verstappen, uh, George Russell, Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel. Um, you know, Alexander Albon, um, these guys, you know, they've got so much personality. And if you ever follow, you know, U.S. sports, you always tend to find that we gravitate towards a specific player or a specific team. And if we allow if you allow us to, you know, kind of learn more about a certain team or you learn, let us learn about a certain individual racer, we tend to, you know, find the similarities in our life with those drivers or with those teams, and that allows us to build build a better connection. Like, I and, and I know this sounds so simplistic, but like I love the Haas Formula One team. You know, such a small team built from the ground up. Yes, they get Ferrari parts and you know, but they've they've basically worked on the smallest budget in Formula One. And I just, I'm an underdog guy. I love underdog stories. I want to see the underdogs, you know, eventually come up and prosper and, and, you know, and basically win and, you know, show, you know, show the bigger teams that the little guy can do it too. And that's kind of what drew me to Haas F1. But if you tell us more and more stories like this in the United States and you have that hour long show, you know, that people can get vested in, you know, people will start learning about drivers they start to get more and more interested because they find a driver that they can relate with or they find a team that they can relate with. And finally, my third point that I think is probably one of the bigger ones is more U.S. representation within Formula One. Now, this is not to say that we need to shoehorn, you know, United States drivers within, you know, Formula One teams or, you know, we need... What I'm saying is where it fits and where U.S. you know born drivers, team principals, um, team owners, wherever they can fit and it makes sense, and it's not just some like oh it's a charity case that we're bringing them into Formula One. That that's what I mean by U.S. representation is I want you know the best of the best, and I I mean I can't be remiss without saying. You know, we got to talk a little bit about Andretti trying, Michael Andretti trying to get within Formula One, uh, had meetings with a lot of the team principals this past weekend in Miami, and so it's going to be really interesting to see, but I mean, a second U.S. team in Formula One, and with Michael Andretti, let's be honest, he's probably going to bring in at least one uh, American driver, if not potentially two. I mean, there's always... Chances that we could see two American drivers on the grid. You've got guys in Formula 2 and Formula 3 from the United States that would definitely fit that bill, along with the likes of Colton Herta, Alexander Rossi, Pato Award. You know, if you could get one of those guys in to the seat, in which it all looks like it's going to be Colton Herta basically taking one of those seats, it's going to bring more fans because it, for American fans... If you've got an American team, like that's why the other part to reason why I watch Haas F1 and I pay so much attention to them is it's an American team. So now if you bring in a second American team, 
like a Michael Andretti, who's an absolute, you know, legend in the world of motorsports, if you bring Andretti into Formula One, that name alone will bring viewers. But if you bring in, if Andretti comes in and is able to compete with some of the bigger teams, that's, I mean, that's just, that's money. That is money for Formula One. And I think Liberty Media and Formula One and the other teams in general would absolutely relish the fact of having, you know, uh, a U.S. team in there that brings more eyes in the United States. And with the fact that you're going to have three races in 2023 in the United States, in Las Vegas, Austin, and Miami, you know, this is going to, it's going to start building. It's going to start snowballing. And, you know, if you can get more American representation within Formula One, not just as drivers, not just as the broadcasting, but, you know, getting more uh, Americans within higher positions within companies or having more American team owners, I think that will definitely draw more American fans in because they will have something to root for and they'll be able to know a little bit more about the teams once they're coming into the sport. But guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What things would you like to see America do or Formula One do um, for the Americans to, you know, basically get more American fans into Formula One. So let me know in the comment section down below. Guys, slap a like on this video for more. I got weekly, almost daily Formula One content. Caused a little bit of controversy if you haven't seen um, with my last video. Um, but also, guys, Subscribe if you guys are new to this channel for more Formula One content. We're going to have so much more, you know, between race previews, race recaps. Going to be doing uh, some more uh, Formula One reaction videos and some more Formula One challenge videos. Um, got so much more of that to come. So subscribe to this channel if you guys are new. And guys, for the American F1 fan, I'm Eric Ringle, signing off.